ti pone cineo e caraia. Mi e ne ni pa cinea ci pone cineo e caraia. May this moment be the moment of your first heartbeat. That would be the direct translation of this, but actually what it would mean in this language is may you remember to begin again. It is a reminder as it is a greeting to start each day, to start each moment anew, again, fresh, with a blank state DNA, as we have been learning in the last few days. So, mi et ne ni pa chinea chi po ne chinea e caraya. It's a beautiful greeting, one that I, I love very, very much. You should start a Lemurian school or something, teach that, teach that language again. Yeah, because that would be wonderful for people to speak that language again, because it is not just words, it also opens the heart. It's a language that <clears throat> knows no gravity, it knows no negative words, it knows no fighting. There is no fighting in Lemurian, there are no words to call each other names, there are no words to fight with each other. So. It's usually pretty beautiful. Mia neni pa chinea chi pone chineo e caraya. It's beautiful. Yeah, I know. So anyway, family. We've gone through quite a lot of things in the last few days. Not just the last five days, but actually the last 13 days. And I believe that the e caraya from yesterday the one with uh, dragon energy and later on uh, Ekara, that was yesterday, right? Yeah, has brought us to a point of more insight than we had before. We now know what we've been doing in the last 13 days. I would also like to remind you that we are coming to the point when the bubble that we've been in is going to burst open and going to flood its energy over planet Earth. So that's going to be a fascinating experiment. I hope that it will make sure that uh, Belgium will remain without a government. <laughs> because it's been without a government now for about 180 days already, I believe. Which is, uh, which is very fascinating, isn't it? Especially to see now that so many of the politic politicians' masks have come off. Because at first people believed that these politicians were very wise people. And now for the last 150 days almost, they have been calling each other names on the news, like, it's his fault, it's his fault, he did it, he did it. And they start accusing each other, so the political system is attacking itself, basically, from the inside out, which you could call a virus. Now, and I, I, remind, I remind you that, actually, we were forced, we were in England at the time, and we were forced to uh, come back because we had to vote, and nobody actually felt like coming back, if you remember. We wanted to stay there, especially the, the last two days were terrible because we needed to, to leave Glastonbury. But anyway, we had to come back because of the, uh, the voting. And I remember as we went to the voting office, we said, oh, we're just going to plant an energy virus in there so that the government will never be formed. <laughs> So I don't know when your next period for voting in Holland is going to be, <laughs> but uh, we'll be there. But it's, it's, uh, it's very beautiful to see that, that these things actually do become manifest if you just have a 100% solid belief system. And that is so very important to have your belief system completely and utterly ready at hand. Uh, we were talking last night in the room. Uh, we were trying to um, we were trying to talk about manifestation and, and the like. And one of the things that also came up: if you want to manifest something, if you want to create your own reality, there is no recipe to follow. There is no trick to learn, uh, except for the akine and the elements and that sort of thing. But for the rest, there is no trick to learn. All you need is a one hundred percent conviction that it is going to work and you leave no space, no space at all for any type of doubt. But that means that you have to dig deep into your subconscious, which is the territory of the mind as well, because there will always remain a certain aspect of doubt. And that's why you have to let go of those illusions, you have to let go of the mind-based thinking and everything so that you can make manifest all of these things. Um, anyway, today, we are at the last day of our 13-day cycle, getting ready to go 
out again, to start again, basically, to begin again also. I hope that everybody has had a chance to integrate all the information, all the things that we have done in the course of the last 13 or 5, in this case, days. And I would like to take this opportunity for like half an hour or so to see if you have any questions left about anything that we have covered in the last couple of days. And I'm not just talking about these days, I'm also talking about the other days. Now, are there any questions? Um, can you please explain the bubble thing again and afterwards uh, about the importance to keep our thoughts pure? Yes, okay. Well, the bubble thing uh, is, <laughs> is about the fact that 13 days ago, or actually a little bit longer ago, when the first seminar started in Den Helder, a type of bubble, a vacuum of energy, was created uh, based solely on free energy, uh, akinaic energy, everything that that has been about. And we have been building that energy for all those days now, getting ready now to uh, release that. And it's a different way of working. You see, you can step into the world and you can, uh, you can work with people one-on-one-on-one, -on -one -on -one, uh, trying to change their attitudes and everything. Or, and that is what was said back then, you could come together with a group such as this one, build up a lot of energy, prepare that to let it loose upon the world. And that is basically what we're going to be doing. But obviously that energy is based on what we hold in our hearts. So that is why uh, I believe it was Shasaya at that point who was speaking about the purity of our hearts, to make sure our hearts are as pure as possible. And with pure, it is just a concept that you are without fear, that you are without uh, any type of duality, that you are in a neutral state as you leave here, because that's going to be very important, because as I visualize it, as I see it, it is more everybody go. It's not like <clears throat> we're all going to hold our breath in, in, uh, in, in five hours and the bubble is going to burst. I see it more that everybody is going to go out one on one, one by one, and each time there's going to be a floodgate of energy as you leave these areas. So as you leave the, the group consciousness, you're going to be taking a lot of that energy with you, but also you're going to be flooding it. And it's going to begin with the people you know, you see? Uh, and from there it's going to spread out. And that's a different way of working. It is basically a soft way to revolutionize the world. So that's, that's what we're doing. And at the same time, as you step away from here, uh, it's also one of the things that Akara said yesterday, you will become less um, influenced by mind control. Because it's happening all over the place, mind control. You know, it's, uh, it's even in food. I remember when we were, I think it was in Las Vegas. We were in Las Vegas and we were still planning to go to Sedona at that point with our camper. You see, wanted to drive on uh, the eight of us uh, to Sedona, which would again have been a five hour trip at least. I think even more than five hours, no? Yeah, it was a long trip. And uh, we would have been there for a while. However, um, we got a communication at that point about the depth of mind control and, uh, and how it was influencing everything, even our food. The food, and especially the American food, is, is so genetically manipulated all the time that you have no authenticity left. So um, that always influences us. And I'm not saying that it's only happening on a level of thought, but also on a level of uh, physical existence, so that your body cannot handle higher vibrations. It's, it's happening to so many people constantly, all the time. Now you could ask, at that point, where can I find food that I can eat? Where can I find pure, pure food, pure drinking? But actually, almost nowhere at this point. It is nowhere to be found anymore on planet Earth, so we are going to have to purify it within ourselves. That's the only way at this point. Uh, I'm not saying that it's never going to come back, the purity of the planet. It has to come back, it will come back, it is coming back. But um, we are going to have to be the ones now, the human race, that is going to be purifying things from within, 
for a while because on the outside, I mean, we'll, we'll be, after the seminar is over in two days, we'll be leaving for California, uh, a group of us at least, and uh, it's, we're, we're going to step right back into that whole food chain thing, uh, which is also happening here. Actually, we noticed as we came back in, after those couple of months that we were gone, how radically things had changed here as well. You don't notice it when you're in here. You don't see it when you're living in your daily lives. But if you step out and you step back in, you just see the change. You just see how, how many things and how quickly these things are changing. And what about the, the food that has the label biological? Yes, um, that is a little bit better. But still, uh, don't forget that biological food and bio things are also turning into an industry today. It's also becoming an industry. You, you have to remember this. People would not ever set up a, an industry if it wasn't about profit. Yes. So what they have noticed is, oh, there's a group of people who want to live differently, who want to eat differently. We're going to play in on that trend. You see? So it is a little bit better, but it is also grown on earth that has been so... Poisoned, yes. So, actual authentic food is very hard to find. It's maybe grown on some places. I know of about, I know about a couple of um, biological farms in Hawaii. Uh, but even those people are saying they have to do a lot to keep the food really clean and that the soil has already been damaged as well. So, it's not really a, a, a nice prospect if you think about it. But it will be. It will become better because as we change, so will the earth. Yeah. Travel in the area hmm? through the gardens and yeah. everywhere. Yeah. The more we uh, travel the planet, the more, the more we, we purify it again. Yeah. Okay. It's also something that we learned as we were going through the Zacharias. You wanted to ask a question, honey? Yeah, about uh, the children. Lots of children are allergic for. Uh, yes. For the food? Yes. How can they manage? Uh... Well, my opinion would be, uh, because it is true, many of these kids can't even handle vegetables anymore. Certain types of vegetables that they react to uh, very strangely. But uh, what I would suggest is allowing these children to eat what they say they want to eat, because they have a like an inner compass. You see a, a built-in navigational system for what is safe to them and what isn't. And it is only when you allow these children not to follow their heart and when you force them, uh, like uh, we were talking yesterday during the Akariah, right, uh, about vaccines and vaccination. When you force these things on them, then you create a problem. But as we know from somebody we know very well who <coughs> actually used to have a four-year-old daughter and she always let her daughter choose what she wanted because if the school said you need to be vaccinated and the girl said I don't feel, I, I don't want to do that then she said okay my kid doesn't have to do that with the result now that the government took her child away because apparently she wasn't taking care of it you see? so that happens you will know as a mother, you will know uh, as a parent you will feel what the child wants and what it doesn't want and it will make it very clear Yes? To start with, um, when did we personally uh, experience the time, uh, uh, you say? The time shift? The, 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 the length of the time. The lengthening of the time, like we did yeah, uh, last sure. time. We still have to wait a little bit for that to, to occur. But you can start playing with it. Uh, if you start playing with it already, you will have an impact. It's just not going to be as big an impact as you will see after January 28th, when the 111 gate closes. But let's just say that December is, a, is like a training month of really starting to live your life in a different way. Um, again, so many people that are now traveling with us, they thought at first that their lives would be over if they stepped away from their jobs and if they uh, quit their apartments and, and, and the like, you know? But things are still going on. It is just that we are trained to believe that we're going to end up under a bridge somewhere, you know, in a carton box if we can't pay our bills or we're going to be... Like, really, isn't it in 
this society, one of the worst things that you can imagine is that you can't pay your bills anymore. That's like a tragedy, that's like a taboo. It's like as, as bad as having a deadly disease or something and then people will say, oh yes, that one, you know? And that's also always very interesting because um, you see the jealousy of people there, right? You oftentimes see somebody who kind of lets himself go or herself go and starts buying all these things and people <clears throat> become jealous and then when that person crashes or when that person goes down because there's a problem financially the whole town will start going, yeah, I told you so, he, he wasn't very wise, you know, he was just letting himself go but you see, it, it happens so much. What is very important in the month of December and uh, I have witnessed that in, in the lives of people around me as well there's two things that you can do. You can let go, you can take that month off, but you can actually also let go completely and take the mind off. Because you see, if I, if I think back to, to people I have, um, I have worked with during sessions, there was a person who actually wanted to, to be an entertainer. Uh, she wanted to work with, uh, with groups of children and everything and she had a partner, they weren't living together and at a certain point she calls me for a session and she says I'm working in an office right now and it's actually killing me, I need to get out I'm, every weekend I'm working with children, I'm doing parties, I'm being a clown and you know I'm going to these parties and it makes me so very happy and I told her, well, if that is your passion, you know, go for it. Okay, so, well, the session lasts a little bit longer than that, but, you know. And after uh, a couple of weeks, I get another session from that lady. And she calls me back and she says, how could you tell me to do this? I said, why, why, what's wrong? She said, well, I left my house, I'm living with my partner now, so that I could save up some money. Uh, there was a light going on right there so I could save up some money and, and she said now I quit my job and I'm doing this but I'm freaking out when I don't get an appointment to go to a children's party and I'm, I'm totally paralyzed waiting for that phone to ring now because now I'm independent and I changed my entire life and now I'm stuck with this and, uh, and the money is still not coming in and I said well yeah but you see what your problem was you choose to go for your passion, but you can choose while still keeping alive all those old paradigms, all those old patterns. You see, she was working in a, in a job before that, in an office. What were her problems there? She didn't like to work and she always was short of money, although she was in a well-paid job. And then she goes into this passion, supposedly, where she's still creating the same patterns. Namely, that she didn't like the work. Well, she likes the work now, but now there's another frustration about the work, namely that she has to wait for phone calls. So, again, she creates imperfection. And the same thing was happening to her financially. You see? And when we talked about that one, um, about five weeks or six weeks down the road, I received an email from her saying that now that she saw those patterns, she had broken them and now she was really a successful uh, kindergarten or uh, kinder, uh, child's party entertainer and she had uh, calls every, every couple of days and, and things were really good for her. So. so December isn't just going to be about taking a month off but it's also going to be about letting go of those patternings completely because if you don't, I mean we were talking about that yesterday you can step into a new life, but if you keep the old patterns alive, then it's not a new life. It's still the same. But only you think you have let go on a mental level, and you haven't let go on an energy level yet. So, work on that in the month of December. So I think that, the, to round up the question, I believe that, uh, especially end of January, the free energy will become completely available. But before that, play around with it. See how far you can go with it. Maybe you already have full access. You never know. <laughs> I uh, almost always I do the exercise.
to uh, having another uh, view, point of view, view, point of view, yeah. point of view, to me. So okay. always I. Um, Uh, I, I blend my environment with myself. Yeah. And uh, um, we could we could think it doesn't uh, have uh, not so much uh, influence, mm -hmm. but uh, the influence is very very okay. great. If you do that, you mean yes. if you do that exercise? Yes. 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 That is true. So now my environment mm -hmm. uh, remembers myself, remembers me myself. Mm -hmm. Not not my uh, my identity, but really myself. Yes, yes. And you mean what? What do you mean exactly when you say my environment remembers myself? Um, I I I see letters, and I see my name everywhere. Really? Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. And also the walls, all, all things reflect myself. Mm -hmm. That's beautifully said. Yeah. As you were saying, as you were starting to talk, and you said point of view. Yeah. Uh, I was reminded, uh, I saw in my, in, my, in my mind, or in my, not in my mind, but in my brain somewhere, in my neocortex, I saw, uh, you said point of view, and mm -hmm. I immediately heard point of you. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a really nice uh, way of saying that, it's a point yeah. of view. Yeah. Uh, because that makes it quite different. You yeah. can have it's somebody else's, you can have another point of view, <laughs> you see, through somebody else. And that is really nice. It is the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. You need to recognize the world around you as your own, as your own complete creation. And this is what it is being said ever since the beginning of the manifest uh, of this year, basically, of our of our uh, insights that we have been offered this year. This is about, this is what the sovereign universe is all about. This is what the fact that there is no world and you are all that is, is all about. You see, it's all about your own point of view. It's you showing up in everything around you. And when that starts to happen, well, yeah, there is no going back, is there? I'm very sure because I guess in the last times that you were here during the last seminars, you've been speaking about your your home situation, right? That it just kept following you all the time, and I'm very sure that it's going to be completely different now. Uh, you already feel quite different. There was always you were like carrying a burden with you every time you you walked in. You see, but that's gone now. It's so beautiful to see that change. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm happy too. Yeah. <laughs> You're beaming, it's beautiful. <laughs> if I have learned it correctly, the state of neutrality is simply to be in the now moment. The state of neutrality is about being in the now moment, but also um, having no type of duality at all present. And also, and this is going to be the most difficult, duality shows up in so many different things. Duality means judgment. Defining energy, that's what duality is all about, right? That is a chair. Actually, that is a judgment. <laughs> the fact that you call that a chair is a definition of energy. So you are basically judging or defining that energy. Neutrality doesn't do that. Neutrality recognizes the object, but it actually recognizes the fluidity of the object as well. It doesn't hold on to it. And that is what we have always been talking about when we were speaking about the memories of the now. You can allow energy to take shape, but you don't have to hold on to it. And if we start collecting stuff in our lives, and we start having possessions, right? Imagine no possessions. All those possessions that we have are all about judgments, all about definition. We are keeping that energy in that box. And actually, as Katumi yesterday was talking about the prison of the mind, remember how we take every second and we just take a little bit of our own energy and we put that in a prison every single second? We also do that with the things around us. 
because that is our energy right there. You see that car that you have to work for for 20 years or the house that you have to work for for 20 years is you that you are continuously refining further and further and further as you are working to keep it in that form. Because if the house goes, all that energy comes available again. And it's back to you again. Yes. <laughs> Only you have to make sure you don't keep the energy still in the same pattern. It becomes neutral again. And that is what neutrality is all about. You see? But before you have to, somewhere in the brain, uh, assemble all, all the channeled pieces of yourself? Do you have to do that before you Top can... life, you mean? Yeah. Or the shattered pieces? Yes. yes. Yes, that is very necessary. Before Otherwise, you can you... reach the pure state of mind. Uh, we yes. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let, let, I'll let that one go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Basically. Yeah. You have to do that, all those little pieces. Put them back together and you will see how full, how complete you will become again. And you won't need anything. It's the beauty of it. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Question about that. Oh, thank you. Here you go. Good morning, by the way. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Is it like a retrieval of the soul parts? You could call it that. Um, what's that friend of ours? Hosi. Hosi, yeah, Hosi Steinberg. Have, I have an exercise doing that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she actually retrieving the soul parts. You could say that. It's about that. That's what was Kutumi is talking about. Yeah. So you don't have to necessarily know what, what it is. Just yes. Retrieve call it. them all back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can okay. know what it all is. It is impossible for the yeah. mind to to have a an instant recollection of everything that you've gone through in your lives. So that's just going to take uh, a moment okay. of deciding that it's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else still has a question? Yeah. Yes, over there, Vilma. Uh, this night, I had a strange night. <laughs> Don't we all? And um, I had the feeling uh, that about the environment. Yeah. Uh, it was a Katoomi that was talking about it. I had uh, that, uh, a lot of tears, and then I stood in the room. And I had a feeling I was standing in my parents' house. Yeah. And I um, reclaimed energy back. Yes. And, um, now I'm very tired, but I also feel uh, relieved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that possible? Yes, that is. A, I know we didn't get around to talking again after the Katumi channel, but that is exactly what he was talking about. Yes, that's exactly what he, he wanted you to do basically to reclaim that energy and obviously you should be feeling tired because how long that energy has been stuck there for so long so it is tired it needs to regenerate you see so that's a good thing that happened yeah definitely <sighs> it's nice to see everybody so changed there's there's a lot of I know there's still some questions and I know there's there's a lot of questions with everybody probably about how am I going to go on now and how, you, how do I actually need to, to put this in a practical way into my life but so much has happened and I see uh, everybody's face is so very different especially if I look at the energy. Is there anybody still who feels uncomfortable with all of this, who, who feels afraid a little bit about doing it all? Yes, I, I, I thought that there were still some people. So. Um, Yes. Because last night I didn't sleep at all. Yeah. I was so uh, fearful. And, uh, Could you hold it a little bit closer? I was so fearful and yeah. so. Uh, but I had this already a long time, so I don't know what happens. So it, it just becomes like it's uh, it goes deeper and deeper. So instead of. Uh, <coughs> and and my, when I was so warm and so hot, and I thought I, I should explode, maybe and I, I became fear about that. So yeah. Again. Yeah. So what what creates fear? The way how my body reacts now. Uh, no, but what it, 
Yeah, but the, the bodily reaction isn't creating the fear. Uh, the bodily reaction is just a reaction. The fear is coming from someplace else, isn't it? From the mind. That yes. Explode, like Why is the mind afraid that the body will explode? Because it is a metaphor what you're saying now. The mind is afraid that the body will explode. Not, of course, an actual explosion, because that will never happen, but, uh, but the body might explode energetically. It might open up completely, allowing to have that complete sense of flow again. And naturally, the mind will be fearful for that, because that means the death of the ego. Yeah, it's, it seems like like feeling going dead again. Yes, yeah. yes. Who spoke to me? Um, I think it was you, right? Uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday when you said, so letting go of all of these illusions and stepping into that is like dying again. Yeah. Yes, you said that. Huh? Well, yeah, okay. there you go. So it is a death. It is a death of personality. It is a death of identity and a death of ego. Without actually killing the ego completely, it is a death of the triumph of the ego over the consciousness. So what is happening to you basically is good. If you let the fear go, then the process can actually take place. If you keep the fear alive, then you will keep the process stagnant. It can't move then. I can do that and then I can the agony and so on. Yes. And then the talk to a few minutes, uh, it's there again. But, uh, so. That might be for a while, yes. Then you have to do it again. Yeah. And it might be gone again and after 15 minutes it's back and then you do it again. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like teaching, uh, training yourself a new pathway, uh, allowing a new process to come into you. So you just uh, at the beginning it's very, you know, you must remember you've been stuck in this way of living for many 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 years. So you can't accept or expect it to change overnight. Well, you can, but. Um, Usually, in most cases, it doesn't happen that way and you're going to have to train yourself again. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody who has had an accident and has been lying in the hospital for many months and he has forgotten how to walk. Mm -hmm. and, all, and he has to learn how to walk again. And at first, it's like, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. But then, after a while, it gets better. Mm -hmm. It will get better. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Ah, yes, Inanna. It's a beautiful name, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm. yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. Mm. Oh. <laughs> These days has been quite a process. These days? Yeah. 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 In the beginning, I knew I won that. It came in duality. And uh, I always, I didn't, I was not awake enough early to do some uh, integration. Yes. This morning I had a quart, three quarters of an hour uh, before I had to get up. Mm -hmm. So I was putting it on paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had my question. How can I uh, serve my divine mission the best way? Mm -hmm. And I had two solutions. Duality. <laughs> and I had the solution when I do it here. Yeah. Uh, the way I was doing it before. Yeah. But doing it always more and more and better, or, uh, <coughs> or, or, can I join a fine group, mm -hmm. do what I want for 20 years, mm -hmm. with that group, this group, mm -hmm. This group of people, you mean? Uh, the group of a wife. <coughs> okay. <laughs> and again, the wife. And much questions. But yeah. I said, therefore, I said yes, because I said, oh, it's not no problem. Uh, my son will uh, uh, sell my house, and uh, my, children, my grandchildren will come to a wife. So I, I, I made solutions. Yeah. But nevertheless, many questions, many questions stay. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, you know... Uh, it's a pool of questions. Eh? Yeah, there's a lot of questions. I yeah. understand, I understand. Because, you see, 
what, what you're getting is Let's go back to the beginning, yeah, because we're very warm from it. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. So much energy. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good sign. Yes. Let's let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how can you serve, as you said, your divine plan? Well, you serve your divine plan by your existence on planet Earth, and especially by your conscious existence on planet Earth. You are not serving the plan by allowing the earth and the society and the mental energy that society offers to wash over you and to, well, how can I say it, to, to basically destroy your mission. That's not the question. That's not what you're no. doing. I know that's not no. what you're doing. That, that is not the way since I was a child. Yes, I know. I know who you are. I know what you've been doing. <laughs> I, I also know that you have been working a lot and I know that the question is uh, if you should continue the way you are working now or if you should uh, make it into an entirely new path like Hawaii for instance and to do that. Well I can, I can tell you this, although Hawaii is a base for us, uh, it is a base, it is a space for us to, to live, we are, we are continuously moving all over the world because that is what we want to do. That is our calling, that is our highest yeah, passion. Yeah. What we are also wanting to do is, is, uh, is set up spaces like the one that we have created now in Hawaii on many different places of the earth. New Zealand is one space, um, Peru is going to be another space, um, I see Shasta as another possibility where we'll probably be doing that in California. I also see it happening here. This morning, Magdalene and, and, and myself, we were talking uh, that we've been listening to so many people that have had ideas to start something, you see? And they want to start a center or they want to turn their ground into a center or whatever. And we were talking just this morning that it would be possible to take all of those ideas, take all of that energy and create one big one. Also here, because it's going to be very necessary as it is one point of the nexus, so I would, in, I would uh, encourage everybody who wants to be a part of that, who wants to step into that and do that here, to contact us through email. And, uh, and probably once we get back from California or after our seminar in uh, Tintagel, we'll probably call a meeting or something together, a very informal meeting to see what we can actually make manifest in that respect. As far as Hawaii goes, Everybody is open to travel with us. You see, everybody who wants to, to join in, who wants to travel with us to do those things is always very welcome. Um, that's all I can say about that, really. Yeah, that, that, that was one of the questions. For yes. Me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I sh uh, should uh, do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, as far as you're concerned, you see, you're holding a lot of energy here. Um, you know that, you've been holding a lot of energy in this nexus that is the Benelux, Belgium and Holland and Luxembourg, but let's just focus on Belgium and Holland for a second you've been holding a lot of energy here and as if I'm really honest I don't see um, I don't see that you're quite finished with that yet actually I see that there are still very powerful people needed here as well, who have been holding the Lemurian energy in your case for a long time. Right now, the gates are just opening. And I know that in the course of 2008, many things are going to be different. A lot of people are going to finish energy projects, projects that are working on a spiritual level, a higher self contract, are going to be finished by February, March 2008, when a lot of new space is going to open up for them to step into a new paradigm. And I would advise you to hold on <laughs> until that point, because there will be people here that need you. But then after that, I believe in your case, at least what I'm being told right now, you are, uh, you are going to have more space available to do travel, because travel is definitely in your, in your stars, as they would say. There's, there's definitely that. But you need to come out with your material as well. You need to come out with your wisdom and your knowledge as well. 
to uh, to make that happen. Yeah, I, I, I do it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Not in the way I want it. And, uh, my wish was always to do it together with other people. Mine too. Uh, <laughs> Mine too. It has always yes. been, bless you, it's always been my wish to uh, to unify all the groups. And I have already a place here. I have mm -hmm. a place, uh, I, I was starting there in the 70s mm -hmm. with, a, with a lady who is now 99 years old. Really? And uh, now I, I take a little bit of her place and I'm doing, I have my uh, play in nature here. Okay. So that was the first. Uh, yeah. Thing. Well, hold on to that place still. Yeah. Uh, it's going to continue to exist probably. Um, but you will, after a fashion, step out of that. That is, that is very definite almost. You won't be holding on to that for much longer uh, because there's going to be somebody else step in there for you uh, to allow you uh, your choice, to allow you to uh, step out. And, and do the things that you need to do. But I'm very sure that we'll see you on Hawaii. <laughs> okay, because it, it, it is a dream of course, you know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But also, um, I'm also very sure that you won't be staying there. I'm very yeah. uh, I'm sure that you'll actually move on to Africa. Ah. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, and there's somebody else here who will do the same thing. <laughs> there. Yes. <laughs> My daughter-in-law is uh, organizing a uh, traveling tour to Africa, ah. and I always said, Africa. Uh, I, so, I can understand I that. have to turn that a bit. No, but usually it, it, just, it just remains closed uh, until the potentials literally open up. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it too much. Work on the place that you are in now. Yeah. Uh, finish that work. And, uh, and then the traveling will begin, but I know it will begin in Africa. Maybe you will, you will end up uh, a month or, or two months in Hawaii to, uh, to get some things started up, and then you will probably move on, but it, Africa keeps coming back, so... Yeah. Yes, the hunger is going to be turned around completely and people are going to get empowered, which means there's going to be a lot of spiritual awakening going on, because right now, in Africa, People are still, most of them are still in survival mode. We here, even though some of us might be complaining about, I don't know, about houses and living situation, we are in a much more comfortable space than the people back there. You see? So, um, that is going to change and it's going to need a lot of work. I don't know if that is, uh, I can ask this, but I had a feeling mm -hmm. my daughter in law, so she's organizing traveling to uh, Africa. Yes. And she was going there to for her work to find hotels. Mm -hmm. And I saw a picture of her mm -hmm. with little children. Mm -hmm. And I saw in her also a change in another way. Not for rich people traveling, but for those children. Yes. I, yes. I saw that when I saw that picture. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So maybe I do something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess you're gonna be surprised. You'll be surprised when you step off. What a change! Yeah. What a change! You'll be surprised when you step off. I'm ready to do whatever is asked me. And everybody knows that. Don't worry. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. So uh, I guess they were gonna have a 15-minute break, and we'll see you back at 11:30.